Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to part two of the Amelie Supersized Quilt Along. Hi everybody, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you are enjoying yourselves. Uh, I see, saw some of your comments that you're just listening to the music, sewing along and uh, having a wonderful time. That is music to my ears, I love it. I've been sewing too, I've been working on my blocks as well. So uh, we are gonna start off, uh, I found some great photos of you, smiling faces that you posted in the crew on Facebook. So let's put some of these photos up. I love seeing people in action. So a lot of you are meeting together with friends. So I believe this is a three part. Um, I don't have, I'm sorry, I don't have the names of everybody because everybody didn't get put their names in there. But um, I believe this is Kim with her partner, her niece, which I love seeing new quilters being created during our quilt alongs. Uh, this person is a part of the threesome. Love this one. Next one. <laughs> yep, he's ready. Guess what this guy's name is? His name is Bob. So, <laughs> uh, Bob is overseeing the project in so many ways. We have other furry friends, a part of the process. We have myself in a horrible <laughs> paused <laughs> position. It looks like I'm yelling, but I love this setup. Love the setup with the iPad right there. There are three friends ready for the next step. I love the smiles. So thank you for posting that. Love, love, love it. That looks like a great space to work in. And then we have a group that is sewing at uh, the polka dot pink cushion in Ohio together in their classroom. I love that. What a great setup there. So thank you for sharing all of those. I love seeing. Oh, there's more. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I know this girl. This is Susie with her amazing view up in Washington State. Oh, beautiful with a friend. Love it. So, oh, oh this guy, he was enjoying my voice, I guess. <laughs> or very suspicious. Who is this person that is talking <laughs> in my house? I love it. But thank you all for posting that. Keep them coming. We love seeing that to, so that we feel more together. I also did, I know just very few of you got your progress photos of part one posted in the crew, but there was a few. And I've seen like there was a few a lot uh, that came in after I pulled the photos. I had to pull them to create the slideshow. So let's take a look at a little slideshow with uh, some of your progress in part two, part one. Great job, everybody. And like I said, there's way more already there. So if you have any questions from this part one, I know some of you have just gotten a few blocks done. Some of you just getting started. Maybe you spent um, this past couple hours cutting. No big deal. Um, so that, that 
instructional video is in your accounts now, but uh, if you have any questions on this part one, I saw one, any tips on seam ripping a bias cut piece, a triangle? Um, and she did follow it up with asking for a friend. <laughs> but I do have a tip, but I don't feel like ripping mine out right quite yet, so I think I would just show you um, after we play this part two video for, um, for the next steps. But while we play the part two, I know you wanna pay attention, but if you think of any questions, I'll make sure to post them and we'll try and um, save them so that we can answer some questions in the end. So let's check out the next part, part two of the Amelie quilt. Now we have all of our units finished through step two in the pattern and we're ready to move on to step three. So now we have the accent strip sewn between and we're gonna cut these units in half again, diagonally. But there are a couple of tricks that we wanna make sure that we follow. And that is placing our ruler on top. I'm gonna use my stripology ruler again. And I have the black numbers on this side. Now, if you're left-handed, you wanna turn it the other way around. Here's what I want. I want to make sure that these slits and uh, lines are going to be lined up with these seams. So I like to use the nine inch line. That's my kind of guide because then I know my ruler is even on both sides. So my nine inch line is gonna be on the bottom seam here. And then I want the edge of the ruler to be on both corners. And you wanna make sure that the slits also follow these seams on both sides and you're lined up. Now, in case that these corners don't get lined up perfectly when you have this lined up on, this, on the seams, it's okay. Make sure you just split the difference between the two corners because this is going to be more important than really hitting the corner up here because we trim everything in the end. So seams aligned with the nine and the 11 inch, and then we're just gonna cut this apart. So now we have two triangle units that have that accent strip in the middle. And we're ready to move on to sewing them together which is in step four of the pattern. So what you wanna do is mix up your units again. So we're gonna take two different ones and for example, this one looks good. We just mix up our stuff um, until you're happy with it. And then we're gonna sew them together. So we're gonna lay them together with the long cut edge aligned. However, we're not gonna sew them together like this. We're gonna pull the top one. If you're leading this into the sewing machine, we're gonna pull the top one down until these seams nest. So you're gonna look at your seams where you have the accent strip meeting. And so what that looks like from the other side you wanna pull it down so that they kind of stagger like this. And it's very important that you pull the top one down like this as you're feeding it into the sewing machine because if you do it opposite, your blocks will rotate the wrong way. So make sure you always do it this way and stay consistent. So once I feel these seams nest here, I want to put my pin right in the middle here. And so you, when you start sewing, you should always be able to see both points of the triangle. If you can only see one point of a triangle, that should be your alert to abort, abort. And make sure that you fix that on the bottom. However, you can only see one tip. Two tips on the top, one tip on the bottom. All right, so now we're gonna sew these along this long side and keep matching up our units and make some blocks. 
So let me get this sewn. Now I sewed my two units together and it's time to press. So here's what the unit will look like. It's more of a rectangle than a square. But we are going to press the seams. We're going to spin the seams on this. So here's the seam that I just sewed. I want to press this side up. So I just go here and I push with my fingers, making sure this gets pressed up on the right side. And then I just flip it and do the same thing. This goes up. And then I flip it over. And you will see that it's kind of twist, starting to twist here in the middle. So all we got to do is go in here and pop open that little seam in the middle. And we create a tiny little four patch in the middle of the block. I like to flip it over again when I'm done to get it nice and flat. So that now all of our seams in the middle here are spinning um, in the same, same circle. So now you have step four finished, and you want to keep finishing all of your blocks according to the size that you are making. And there it is. So a few things here to talk about um, that are really necessary to focus on, and I'm going to go through them. But let's answer some questions first. First one I'm going to answer, I saw some, somebody said, how, what is the best way to compensate if your, some of your squares are a little too small? So if it's just a couple of squares, uh, once you cut them into triangles, you can always just do a, a little bit extra scant seam when you sew that to that accent strip. So that would be one way. If all of your squares are a little small, um, you can also just deal with this in the last step. So in part three, we will be squaring up our block. So you can always just go down to the next size block and square up a little bit smaller, um, which is totally fine. Nobody would ever know that your blocks are half inch smaller than what they were supposed to be. <clears throat> All right, do we iron away from the accent strip? Yes, um, just like I explained in part one video, press away from the accent strip. Okay, when will we be able to see the tip for folding the square shown in part one? So you can re-watch the broadcast, just like Tipsy Tuesdays, uh, the videos, the whole broadcast is saved both on YouTube and Facebook, so you can go back and watch these. Uh, probably easiest to find them on YouTube and watch them, the whole, the whole live show. But then uh, about sometime next week, once Mr. HP has kind of edited it down and into just the extra tips. We, he will put that video into your accounts and then those live broadcast videos will go away. All right, uh, would stickers on the nine inch slit be helpful in lining up for the cross cut? Yes, and I have one on mine. So I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. Any more questions maybe about the first part? Um, is it more, oh, uh, this, this was the one I'm gonna address. Also, also, I'll get to this. If it's any more questions on the part one, then maybe we can get to those. Um, but I'm going to show you how to kind of take you through that same step as before. So I have my, uh, one of my blocks here ready to be cut apart. And so we talked about aligning your ruler. I'm going to do this this way. Since I'm right-handed, so I like to have the slant kind of going up the hill from left to right. So I align my ruler, and yes, I have a little sticker on the 9-inch. You can have it on both the 9 and the 11, because if you have a perfect seam allowance, a scant quarter inch, these lines should line up on each side, uh, on, on each of the seams. So this is most important, lining it up with a seam versus hitting both corners. So here, for example, I'm a little off on this corner. I'm spot on down here. So what I do, I split the difference. So I'm going to move this. So this is, I'm kind of less than an eighth of an inch off on each side. This thing does not matter really at all because we square everything up in the end. It's more important to have this aligned because when we're sewing two together, this is what keeps this triangle 
straight. The points do not matter at all. They're going to get trimmed off. So that is <coughs> that is the um, best way. So we cut it apart. Just be very careful there. Unfortunately, I wouldn't recommend any other way to cut this apart than on the edge of the ruler. So just be really careful. If you don't have an, a large ruler, you can always just use, if you have a long ruler, like a 6 by 24, um, you can do that. So there is this one. Then when we get to the next steps, are you collecting some of these questions that are popping up? When we get to the next steps, obviously you want to mix up your fabrics so that you have four different fabrics here. And um, when I teach this class, when I taught the regular Amelie class, um, there's always things that I talk about, well, um, mention multiple times. This was one of them. This is the most important part, cutting apart. The points really don't matter. So then when we flip this one on top to sew these two together, make sure you're pulling the top one down. And you should make sure you're doing it right here. Um, and then you want to pin this one. This is going to be the area where you can nest the seams. So you want to maybe put a pin in here. And if you want to pin more, of course, you can. Um, but for me, I usually just pin this one area and I'm fine. So when you start sewing in the sewing machine, this should be your warning. You should see both tips of um, both triangles uh, when you start sewing. The problem is if you happen to flip this the other way and sew it this way, so you have two points on the bottom and the only one on top, then your blocks will become mirror images of some of the other ones. So make sure that you are consistent with this so all of your blocks pull down this way. Now there is, um, so the difference is your, your blocks will be going, let me just show you here. Your angle will be going this way versus it would be going the other direction if um, you've swipped, switched it. So you have a mirror image block, so they wouldn't work together in a pattern unless you want to be creative and do something different. If you did all of them the same way, that's fine. But uh, any other way would be do half and half. But we're going to focus on following the pattern, so this is what we want to do. Then I saw a question about how do you avoid um, the tip of the triangle being eaten by your sewing machine. So here's the deal. You don't have to start sewing until here. So you can just put your foot over here and start sewing here and go down. So then nothing's is going to get eaten at all. No worries. Okay. Any more questions? Then of course spinning the seams for the pressing is going to be really important um, and just make everything so much easier once it get, we get to sewing the blocks together. But let's see, I saw a lot of questions. All right, any tips? Because there's no bob here, no, no bob here. Um, there is bias edges everywhere, so just do it as I showed. Um, nice and slow, no rush, no pulling, and you should be just fine. Remember, we're going to square everything up in the end. Do you need to clip the seam? No, no need to clip the seam. When you're spinning, you can just pop one seam and it should just fall to the side. So no, no scissors need to be involved. No, no cutting the actual fabric. How would you do this with a regular ruler? You would just cut the straight, um, straight in half. It's the same thing with a regular ruler as it is with a stripology. You have to use a, a, a line on the ruler to align with the seams and then just use the long edge of your ruler to cut them apart. Can we fold it and do it like we did on the first triangle cut? No, I don't recommend that because we want to be able to line it up with both seams. So if you fold it, you only see one seam, they're stacked on top of each other, things could get um, twisted. Believe me, you don't want to do that. It's more putsy than it is just to do it this way. Do I have to spin the seams? It's going to make a huge difference when you put all the blocks together. You won't have thick seams. If you don't spin, you end up having thicker seams on the corners. So it makes a difference. Trust me. <laughs> uh, how can we do the second? Yeah, I just answered this one with a straight ruler. All right. Find anything else? How do we find you on Facebook? <laughs> well, uh, you go to our Facebook page. 
So uh, it's G Equal Design. So go to Facebook, look for G Equal Designs. Make sure you follow that page and then click on the follow button and um, go to notifications to make sure that you're notified whenever we go live. That's where we show up. And if you get notifications, you'll get a little notification, go right to it. Is there another question I missed? Oh. <laughs> Would you please show the folding again? The folding from the part one, um, you can actually go back and watch that whole video, first video. So uh, we can't go back because we'd be doing this over and over again, the same stuff. Can you open the center seam? Yes, yeah, so that's what we do. When we spin the seams, we just pop it. So let me show you. I think I have one over here. This one is already pressed. So all that happens, so this was like this. Once you spin it, uh, the center will stand up. And so you just grab it on each side and just pop it open. And then you actually create this tiny little four patch in the middle. So it's just pop in that um, one stitch. Let's see if we can show, see the little cute little four patch. So that's how easy it is to do. You just want to make sure from this side that you are um, pressing each side this way. And then you flip it over and you'll see and it will kind of fall into place automatically. But make sure you're always pressing it from the front, not from the back. Because if we do it always from the back, then you're going to get creases in your seam. You always want to push those, those seams out. Oh, tip for ripping a by seam. Let me, let me get to that. I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to rip apart something that I <laughs> already sewed. And so... Uh, Is that Jack? That's Jack. Jack and Bob. <laughs> Jack and Bob. Bob is your friend. Jack is not always your friend. In this case it is. You have to. Okay, so uh, over here. So one of the things when you're ripping just a straight seam that doesn't have any cross seams, it's very easy to um, do this really quickly with a uh, seam ripper that has one of those red balls on it. Make sure it's a really sharp one. So one thing you want to avoid when you're uh, ripping out a seam with a bias edge and I know you've probably seen this, uh, where you rip out a few stitches in the beginning. And uh, I've seen some people do this in videos, and it makes me cringe. And then they, then they pull the fabric open to get to more seams, and they keep pulling. So what happens to the bias cut piece is you keep stretching it and stretching it at, at when you're pulling and ripping and pulling and ripping. So what you want to do here, I open it up, so rip out the few stitches here. I use my, um, the red ball on my seam ripper, I slide that on the inside, and then I'm going to move the ripper just straight parallel to the piece that I'm holding. You can also do this standing up and you want to then push straight down, but this way you just want to go straight. Okay, my, this ripper is obviously my old one, because I, I just got a new one. so. It's also, you're going to notice, this, this thread has been pressed a couple of times, so it's much harder to rip out a seam that has, if you've pressed it already. But then you would just want to move straight down. And another tip that I want to tell you is, once you have it ripped out, take it to your iron and just press it flat and then um, before you move it, because then you can really kind of contain the stretch that happened when you ripped it out. Okay? <laughs> Someone said, who is Jack? <laughs> Everybody's got Jack the Ripper in their sewing room, I'm sure. I've got a few. But now this one has to go bye-bye because I'm feeling it's not sharp enough. So that is one tip I can tell you. Your seam rippers lose their sharpness just like the blades in your cutting, in your cutter, rotary cutter, and the needles in your sewing machine. They go dull. So once they're dull, they're going to do more damage than they help you. So they're out. Thank Sharp goodness. cutter. Thank goodness for Jack. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? 
Do you have a, a live winner from all the comments? I did. Uh, is there a way to sharpen Jack? I've not tried it, honestly. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody else would need to answer that. I don't know. With what you could sharpen that little thing to get in there, but you can try. You can try. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mel said, they only get dull if you use them a lot. Exactly. Exactly. So guess what? This one has been used for quite a while, obviously. You've been jacking up. But they also, there's, a, there's quality differences. So make sure if you're in, in, the, in the market for a new seam ripper, don't buy the, buy the cheapest one. I like my clovers because they're always super sharp. So if you can test them in the store before, make sure they're sharp. Um, usually the ones that come with your machines, they're no good. They're usually <laughs> the cheapest ones out there, and they're, they don't really come sharp. Someone asked, does Mr. HP get to sew? I will be using Jack all the time. <laughs> Jacked up again. Jacked up again. <laughs> Somebody just said hi from Bermuda. That's awesome. All right. Um, I don't see any more questions. Do you? No. Everybody just loves the playlist. That's good. That's great. Well, um, so next step, you want to get those pieces so, uh, cut apart. And I already know you don't have all of your units from part one done. Don't worry about it. Even if you have just three or four blocks to continue on with so that you can go through all the steps, that's beautiful. So let's work on getting them together. And, winner. oh, let's do a live winner, yes. Drum roll. Okay. Don Norin, congratulations, Don. Just sent an email to help at geequaldesigns.com and you can claim your prize. We'll get all the prizes out next week. Congrats, congrats, congrats. And keep sharing in the crew if you're on Facebook and Goodrun School Crew in our group. Keep sharing your progress pictures and your happy faces. And guess what? Next segment, we're going to start it off with a little yoga stretch. Oh. Yoga stretch in part three and. Possibly a drinky drink? Possibly a Maybe. drinky drink. Maybe. Maybe. But that's it for us now. Um, I will get that video right into your accounts as soon as we go off, off the air. But I will see you back in what time? an hour and a half. So that will be um, 2 p.m. Central Time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 2 p.m. Central Time. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody.